In a shotgun merger engineered by Swiss authorities and announced on Sunday, UBS will buy rival Swiss bank Credit Suisse for more than $3 billion and assume up to $5.4 billion in losses. The move comes just over a week after Silicon Valley Bank became the biggest U.S. bank to fail since the 2008 financial crisis. The move is aimed at ending immediate bankruptcy concerns and stemming panic about a growing global financial crisis. You know, the bankruptcy of Credit Suisse would have had a collateral damage, a huge collateral damage on the Swiss financial market, also uh, risk of contagion for UBS and other banks, and also internationally. Uh, I have to state that very clearly, this is no bailout. The takeover of Credit Suisse by UBS is the best solution for restoring the confidence that has been lacking in financial markets recently. This was not the best solution, but it dominated the other two, which was either nationalization or trying to wind down the bank. But it's full of contradictions. UBS is taking over Credit Suisse, so this is a commercial solution and not a bailout. We really wanted to avoid a bailout. Yeah, it was a bailout, but you know, bail, bailouts, the, the phrase bailout has become such an awful phrase that everybody's avoiding it. They're going out of their way to say it's not a bailout, um, but then they can't explain why why money is being put to work. Yeah, it is a bailout, and it's a bailout, and you, you heard the minister say it's a bailout because they're dealing with a systemically important bank. The price less than half of what Credit Suisse was worth at the close of trading on Friday. Also, the Swiss National Bank offering a 100 billion franc liquidity assistance to UBS, while the government is granting a 9 billion franc guarantee for potential losses for assets that UBS is taking over. Then the regulator, FINMA, said 16 billion francs of Credit Suisse bonds will become worthless to ensure that private investors help shoulder the cost. At least two major banks in Europe are examining scenarios of contagion possibly spreading in the region's banking sector and looking to the Federal Reserve and the European Central Bank to step in with stronger signals of support. In a sign of a coordinated global response, the European Central Bank vowed to support Eurozone banks with loans if needed. Hi, welcome back to Joe Blogs. As you've seen at the start of this video, Credit Suisse has now gone. It has been taken over by UBS. And this was a deal that's been brokered by the Swiss government and the Swiss authorities due to the fact that Credit Suisse was facing the very real prospect of going into bankruptcy. And that would have been an absolute disaster, not just for Credit Suisse and its shareholders and its customers, but also for Switzerland and Europe and the whole of the global financial market. Credit Suisse is one of 30 banks globally that is recognised as having systemic risk, which means that the failure of the bank could trigger severe instability or even the collapse of a whole economy. A systemic bank is defined as being large in relation to its economy. And when you look at the combined assets of Credit Suisse and UBS, they represent 140% of Switzerland's gross domestic product. So that gives you a flavour as to how important Credit Suisse is in terms of the economy of Switzerland and why it was absolutely critical that the bank did not collapse into bankruptcy. So in today's video, I'll have a look at the terms of the deal that's been brokered by the Swiss authorities. I'll talk about whether or not this is a corporate acquisition or a bailout and what the implications of that are, what the implications for the Credit Suisse shareholders are, and also Credit Suisse's bondholders, because around $17 billion worth of Credit Suisse's bonds are being completely written off as part of this transaction. And then finally today, I'll wrap up with my summary. So whether or not I think this has now fixed the banking crisis or whether it's likely that we're going to see more problems arising over the course of the next three to six months. As you saw at the beginning of the video, UBS has announced that it's agreed to buy its largest competitor in Switzerland, Credit Suisse. The official UBS press release states that this creates a leading global wealth manager with $5 trillion of invested assets across the group, extends UBS's lead in the Swiss home market, and that it includes attractive financial terms which include downside protection. The terms of the deal represent an all-share transaction, which means that UBS isn't actually paying any cash to the shareholders of Credit Suisse, but rather they will receive one UBS share for every 22.48 Credit Suisse shares held, which at the time the deal was announced was equivalent to 0.76 Swiss francs per share, and equates to a total consideration of 3 billion Swiss francs, which is the equivalent to around 3.2 billion US dollars. The official press release goes on to state that UBS will benefit from 25 billion Swiss dollars of downside protection from the transaction to support marks, purchase price adjustments and restructuring costs, 
and an additional 50% downside protection on non-core assets. Both banks will also have unrestricted access to the Swiss National Bank existing facilities through which they can obtain liquidity from the Swiss National Bank in accordance with the guidelines on monetary policy instruments. Now, in terms of what all of that means in real money, UBS is paying $3.2 billion to completely acquire all of the assets of Credit Suisse. And at face value and in normal circumstances, that might look like quite a good deal because the market capitalization of Credit Suisse on Friday, two days before this deal was announced, was over $8 billion. So $3 billion for something worth $8 billion looks like a no-brainer. However, when you look at the details, this is very much not a no-brainer. In 2022, Credit Suisse recorded a loss of $7.9 billion compared to the profit of $7.6 billion that UBS earned. And the two biggest problems facing Credit Suisse right now are that it's been losing a significant amount of customer deposits. This run on its assets actually started back in October. So well before all of the problems that have started as a result of the failure of Silicon Valley Bank, Signature Bank and Silvergate Bank. However, the recent troubles have accentuated Credit Suisse's problems and they've seen a further loss of assets. But in addition to the run on the assets, Credit Suisse is also facing major problems with regards to the losses that it's building up in its portfolio. So when you take a step back and look at Credit Suisse in that context, this acquisition doesn't look that attractive. And it was reported over the weekend that UBS was initially reluctant to agree to this deal. However, a lot of pressure had been applied upon them by the Swiss authorities. It was also reported that when UBS reluctantly agreed to this deal, they wanted to pay $1 billion. However, the Swiss authorities have increased that figure to $3 billion. In order to persuade UBS that this takeover was actually viable, the Swiss authorities have pledged over 160 billion Swiss francs, which is more than $173 billion, in loans and guarantees to underpin the new group and guard against further risks. The largest part of this guarantee package is a 100 billion Swiss franc liquidity facility, which gives the combined bank access to the equivalent of 108 billion US dollars. And in terms of the potential losses on the portfolio, the Swiss authorities have had to provide a 9 billion Swiss franc guarantee to cover the future losses of unwinding the derivatives portfolio that Credit Suisse have amassed. Now, one of the most controversial parts of this deal is that the Swiss regulator has decided that Credit Suisse's bonds, which have a notional value of $17 billion, will be valued at zero. This decision was taken by FINMA, the Swiss regulator, and the rationale behind it was that the bondholders should also bear some of the pain in bailing out Credit Suisse. Now, the implication of this is that the 81 bondholders have been left with nothing, while shareholders who sit below the bonds in the priority ladder in terms of repayment in a bankruptcy process will receive $3.23 billion under the UBS deal. And this is a really interesting outcome because the 81 bonds, which were engineered in the wake of the global financial crisis in 2008, are a form of junior debt that counts towards the bank's regulatory capital, and they were designed as a way to transfer risk to investors and away from taxpayers if a bank gets into trouble. In the normal course of events, the bonds can be converted into equity or written down when a lender's capital buffers are eroded beyond a certain threshold. UBS's chief executive, Ralph Hamers, told analysts that the decision to write down the 81 bonds to zero was taken by FINMA so it would not create a liability for the bank. And this move by the Swiss regulators is likely to make it much more difficult for other institutions to raise 81 debt going forward and effectively could be the end of the 81 concept. So as you saw at the start of the video, the Swiss authorities have gone to great lengths to state that this deal is absolutely not a bailout. It is definitely a corporate acquisition, nothing to do with bailouts, nothing to see here in terms of bailouts. And the reason that they're saying that is because in 2008, after the Swiss authorities had to bail out UBS, so not Credit Suisse, interestingly, Credit Suisse came out of the global financial crisis in reasonable shape. UBS was actually in a much worse financial condition and had to receive a lot of government support from the Swiss authorities. After those bailouts, the Swiss authorities said that they would never bail out the banking sector again. So they put down a marker to say, if this happened in the future, then the banks would have to sort themselves out. However, as we talked about earlier in the video, Credit Suisse represents a systemic risk for the Swiss economy. If Credit Suisse goes bankrupt and fails, then that is very likely to firstly throw the Swiss economy into a deep recession, and secondly would cause a confidence crisis in Swiss banking. 
and Swiss banking historically has been the most trustworthy banking of all. Everybody looks to the Swiss bank accounts as being the safe haven where you go and store huge amounts of wealth without anybody really being able to investigate what's going on. So it's a really critical part to the Swiss economy for a number of reasons. So obviously the Swiss authorities had painted themselves into a corner in 2008 by saying we will never bail out the banks again. But unfortunately where Credit Suisse has found itself, it desperately needed a bailout. Now the authorities were trying desperately to avoid doing this. Last week the Swiss authorities provided a $54 billion liquidity facility to Credit Suisse. Absolutely not a bailout, obviously just a liquidity facility, just to see them through the current problems. But unfortunately for Credit Suisse, that was nowhere near enough because its portfolio of assets is losing money. And it was also starting to hemorrhage cash in terms of the run on the bank accounts. So the Swiss authorities had to step in. They had to do something. Now, I do think it's really interesting that the Swiss authorities are referring to this as a corporate acquisition as this is the sort of thing that happens most weekends in Switzerland. Because in a normal environment, I'm not sure that UBS would be allowed to buy Credit Suisse because these are the two biggest banks in Switzerland. As I mentioned earlier in the video, their combined assets represent 140% of the Swiss GDP. That means that it's 1.4 times larger than the whole of the Swiss economy. So if we were living in a normal economic environment, there's no way on earth that they would approve this merger. You don't let number one and number two merge because that would kill everybody else in the market. But because Credit Suisse is sitting on the brink of bankruptcy, the Swiss authorities had no choice but to go to the largest other player and tell them that they had to buy the bank. So what we've got now is a ginormous Swiss bank that's been formed through this merger. So it is a bit laughable that the Swiss authorities are saying this isn't a bailout, this is just a normal corporate acquisition. Because in normal circumstances, they wouldn't allow this merger to go ahead. But in addition to that issue, we've also got the $173 billion of facilities that the Swiss authorities have put in place to support this deal. It was reported that UBS was not keen at all on this merger. If your biggest competitor is in dire straits and potentially facing bankruptcy, that's obviously good news in the long term for your business because you're going to get a lot of the business that that bank used to hold. So in those circumstances, you don't really need to buy them to benefit from what's happening. But in terms of the risks associated with this purchase, obviously Credit Suisse has a portfolio that is seriously underwater. There are a lot of risky derivatives and assets that are trading out of the money. And when you're making an acquisition of this size at one day's notice, you don't really have the time to do any due diligence. You can't go through and analyze the full portfolio and work out what the real value is, what the risks are, what the potential losses might be. So UBS have run the risk that the losses in the Credit Suisse portfolio could actually be significantly higher than everybody's expecting. And as a result of that, the Swiss authorities have put a $9.7 billion guarantee facility in to cover any future losses. However, that only covers them for $9.7 billion. If the Credit Suisse portfolio actually brings in losses significantly more than that, then UBS will just have to wear that. And then, of course, the final factor with regards to whether or not this is a bailout is what's happened to the bondholders. Because in a normal set of circumstances, if you make an all-share offer for a company that has bonds outstanding, then you will acquire those bonds as part of the acquisition. However, the $17 billion worth of bonds that Credit Suisse have outstanding have actually been written off. They've been written down to zero as part of this deal. And of course, that isn't something that UBS would be able to do in the normal set of circumstances. It can only be done by the regulators. And that's exactly what's happened. And that is absolute confirmation that this deal is a 100% bailout. So what's the summary and conclusion today? Well, I wanted to post this video firstly to share with you the details of the deal that's been agreed between UBS and Credit Suisse to look at the terms and conditions of that, but then also to talk about whether or not this was a bailout and then what the implications of this are for the global economy. Now, as we've seen in today's video, the deal that's been agreed is absolutely a bailout. There is no way that UBS would have made this purchase without all of the special conditions that have been put in place by the Swiss authorities. And those special conditions amount to 173 billion dollars worth of support 
plus an agreed deal, which has come in at 3.2 billion, compared with a market capitalization for Credit Suisse on Friday of over 8 billion. If your company receives a takeover offer from its biggest rival, valued at one third of the current share price, obviously no board in its right mind would ever agree to that. But the fact that Credit Suisse have signed up to this deal tells you that Credit Suisse was on the verge of bankruptcy. It's been losing deposits and cash and profits heavily over the course of the last 6 to 18 months and was now sitting on the brink of disaster. So the Swiss authorities have taken swift action and over the course of 48 hours, they've agreed a $3.2 billion merger between the two biggest banks in Switzerland. And as I mentioned earlier, in normal circumstances, you don't allow number one and number two in a market to merge because it becomes too dominant and you can't have such a big player. But the Swiss authorities actually brokered this deal. They're the ones who put the proposal to UBS. And UBS are reported to have reluctantly agreed to this deal in order to save Credit Suisse and also the Swiss economy. Because as we discussed earlier, Credit Suisse is a systemically important bank. If it had failed, it would have had catastrophic implications for the Swiss economy. So Credit Suisse is now the fourth bank in 10 days that has collapsed. We started off with Silvergate Bank in the USA and everyone Everybody was relaxed about that because they deemed it to be a crypto bank and therefore was not really relevant to the rest of the banking community. That was followed up by the failure of Silicon Valley Bank. And once again, commentators were saying, well, really was a special case because it was providing banking services to the tech sector. The tech sector has come down over the course of the last year or so. And some of the venture capitalists who were supporting those tech companies told them to move their money away from Silicon Valley Bank because they were concerned about the viability of the bank. And therefore, it was specific to that bank. Following on from Silicon Valley Bank, we saw Signature Bank collapse. And again, everybody said, well, it had relationship with the crypto crypto market, the crypto market hasn't been doing very well, therefore it's specific to that bank. But Credit Suisse is one of the biggest banks in the world. It was one of the nine bulge bracket banks on Wall Street. These guys are movers and shakers in the world of investment banking. And Credit Suisse in Europe is a really big deal. So we've now seen one of the biggest banks in the world getting itself to the point of bankruptcy and having to be bailed out by the Swiss authorities and UBS. Now, as I went through in a recent video, Credit Suisse has had a checkered history. Over the course of the last 15 years or so, it's got involved in lots of different scandals and fraud cases, and it's lost a lot of money. So in isolation, you could argue that the problems going on at Credit Suisse are self-inflicted. They got themselves into this position through bad management over the course of the last 10 years or so, and therefore this shouldn't really be something to be worried about. However, when you take a step back and look at the fact that we've had four banks fail over the course of the last 10 days, and that these failures are predominantly being driven by a loss of confidence in the banking sector, it's very likely that we will see more failures over the course of the next three to six months, because everybody is now spooked. If you look at what's happening on the markets right now, banks and finance stocks are dropping like a stone. And the reason for that is investors are worried that there's going to be another failure at some point soon. And so they're taking their money out before they get wiped out. And this isn't just blind panic. The current situation is comparable to what was happening in 2008. Back at the start of the global financial crisis, the first bank that got itself into difficulty was the US investment bank Bear Stearns. And in order to prevent the collapse of Bear Stearns, JP Morgan stepped in and bought it for a bargain price, which is exactly what's happening here between UBS and Credit Suisse. Now, the acquisition of Bear Stearns by JP Morgan took place in March 2008, and it wasn't until September 2008 that Lehman Brothers collapsed, and we then saw a complete failure of the banking markets all around the world. Now, in terms of what's happening today, does that mean that it's going to be six months before we'd see the failure of another bank? Well, I don't think so, because in terms of the loss of confidence and trust and the nervousness around the financial markets right now, it's at an all-time high, and lots of financial institutions are scrambling 
trying to get cash, trying to get some sort of liquidity in place to stem the losses that they're seeing from the customers withdrawing all of their money. And I've reported on it in other videos. There's lots of banks in the US, but also in Europe and elsewhere around the world. And all we're waiting for now is news of the next bank that's got itself to the brink of collapse. And it may well be that that country's authorities step in and organize some form of merger in the same way as UBS has merged with Credit Suisse. However, the real risk we've got here is when the authorities say no more, we are not going to bail out the banks any longer, we will let these banks fail. That's exactly what happened with Lehman Brothers. The US authorities said, we will not bail out Lehman Brothers. We will let it go down. And that then caused a domino effect all around the world. And as soon as we see that happening, as soon as one of the authorities says, we are not going to support this bank, we will let it fail. That could be the start of the next global financial crisis. So hopefully you've enjoyed today's video. You found it interesting, useful, and thought provoking. If you've liked what I've said, then please give me a thumbs up. And thank you for watching this video all the way through to the end. And here's the usual payoff.